F4. Hi everybody, it's me Roman Belov, I'm a founder at Kintools and it's our first educational stream. So hopefully everything is okay in terms of all technical stuff and you can hear me because unfortunately I can't see you. So for me it's very unusual experience because basically I'm speaking at home with my laptop. So please, please. Please help me and uh, ask questions because it will really give some feedback and I can understand that everything is okay and um, you at least can hear me. So, um, and let's start. So, today, well, First, regarding questions. You can ask questions in two different places. First one is uh, chat here in YouTube. And the other place is uh, our Discord server, which we created specifically for chatting with you and to action and to you to, ch to, ch to chat with each other. So, um, here the uh, oh, here's a link, and if you are not yet, uh, then please join us, and uh, anytime we we'll can answer your questions. So, and yeah, of course, today we read chat as well. I'm going to with um, oh, Kintool's team. We quite a small team uh, of. Um, nine people at the moment. Uh, most of us are developers and um, two guys work on marketing and me, I'm, I, I do some small tweaks here and there. Today I'm going to present this uh, um, educational series. Well, and um, several words about history. 
first of all, um, we started like five years ago already, and we uh, the first thing which we released was a pin tool, and actually it's the node which we will discuss today. And um, now it's free, and uh, it was really warm welcomed by the community, and it gives us a fuel to walk further, and we created a first um, geometry tracker for Nuke, uh, and uh, it was like probably three years ago, and then we understood that people tend to track faces a lot, but it's not that easy to get the model of the face, and we create a tool for getting, um, for obtaining geometries of uh, human faces, and it's called Face Builder, and we released it uh, fairly um, soon after GeoTracker, like probably in a um, year, and then we understood that we can not only track the position of the face, but also add some uh, facial deformations um, in addition to just position and translation. And it's now it's called Face Tracker. Um, and recently, like several months ago, we uh, created, uh, we ported our plugin to Blender. And um, currently we port it on the Face Builder, but we have a plan to um, port other plugins as well. And not only to Blender, but we can discuss it at the end um, in answering your questions. By the way, regarding the questions, some of them, which are related to the current stuff, I will answer uh, when I see them. But other, which could be about anything, I will uh, postpone to the very end of the stream. So, uh, regarding the streams, it's the first stream, but we have a great plan. Uh, the next stream will be dedicated to GeoTracker, one of the most famous our plugins and uh, which is widely used now probably in all studios in the world and um, probably it will contain two or three parts I didn't yet decide it one uh, will be basic, some basic stuff then some tips and tricks and the last one uh, will be about deformable tracking uh, then we'll go to face build and face tracker and discuss how to do facial replacements uh, some di digital makeup and so on and um, then we will jump to blender and then then we'll decide because we have lots of different stuff to share but everything depends on you on and your questions so uh, oh, it's not yet visible something like this. So, um, why it's always jumping to slides? The first tool which we will discuss today will be a pin tool. And let's jump to Nuke. It's a demo time. I will use very, very old footage for this, but it was um, f um, this creature, this 3D foxy. Uh, this fox was, it's a, it's a real object and it's a kind of a anima, um, it's kind of a mask uh, which was on, a, on an actor and it, um, then we, uh, there was a show where we tried to track all these creepy creatures and uh, animate them at some expressions, uh, wet eyes and so on. And basically it was a show uh, from when the uh, idea of GeoTracker came in my mind. So uh, here's a simple footage, just a 3D object, we have a model which was obtained via photogrammetry or 3D scanning. I don't really remember. Let's reload the model. Where is the model? It's rather small. Um, 
and um, and we have a camera and basically pin tool is a very simple tool on the first side it has three inputs uh, one is for background one is for geometry and one for camera and um, the thing is that we will try to place the model correctly according to the camera so let's start uh, pin tool is a, whoa, is it 3d node actually you can see it looking at it form all 3d nodes looks like this and uh, but we walk with it with it in 2d because we look at projection so we start with clicking center geo and then we can set up pins to any point on a surface and probably you can't see it here it is this red dot and up uh, oh, oh. and we then drag this pin to the corresponding point on a footage on a projection here it is very simple so if I add one more viewer and switch to 3d you may notice then when I drag points here actually the model the object change change its position in 3d space something like this so like control that works and um, that's the general idea of a pin tool so let's discuss it in details because there are lots of details and all plugins like face uh, builder face tracker geo tracker they all shares the same logic uh, of a which we will uh, discuss today on on example um, on pin tool so let's switch back to um, presentation place a pin we discuss how to place a pin let's discuss how to remove a pin uh, very simple just right click and we we deleted this red dot again I set it up and drag it I delete it set it so and you can set up points not only in uh, um, points of the mesh but on any surface point so like like here because sometimes some notable features are not on the mesh uh, on, on in the mesh points but somewhere on a face um, next uh, multi selection yeah so sometimes for example if you have several pins on, on an ear you want to drag them together so you can select them they become like uh, blue and you can drag them it was really a long awaited feature because sometimes when you have lots of uh, pins on, on an object it's really hard to place them one by one um, one moment where it is so and um, the last but not least thing is this spring pins back uh, tick here in toolbar it's pretty important thing so let's discuss what's going on when you drag the pin when you drag the pin you may notice there is a kind of a blue rope over there so what is it because pin is actually not only a point on the surface but when you drag it it's also a two-dimensional point and there is a kind of reprojection error because all points all pins can't share um, can't be exactly on 
the point on 2D where you drag it. Because other pins, like try, uh, because there are several pins and they um, affect this model altogether. And obviously there are some reprojection errors. And when you in mode spring pins back, when you drag and then release it, then um, you basically snap this point back to the, uh, to, to the surface. But sometimes, uh, and it, actually it's very easy to use, but sometimes you need a kind of a... Um, um, when, for example, when I know exactly where some point, point located is, for example, I set a pin here and here, and now I know that this point should be in the middle of this car. And um, let's, for example, center geo. And then I switch off spring spins back. Then I, when I drag, it will always uh, try to, it, it's always pulled to this 2D point, this 3D point. So there is a kind of a elastic rope which tries to uh, drag the model in this direction. And um, when I click it again, it will snap them. So uh, basically, pin tool, it wasn't something which we created. No, actually, pin tool was an instrument which was used in P of track. Uh, and actually, they used exactly this um type of uh, interaction without uh, with these ropes but usually for example it would, let's try to use them let's delete some some oh let's delete some points uh remove pins there is a button for this remove pins so it it, it actually but pretty clean way but sometimes you don't know where to drag the pin and that could be an, an issue uh, because there is no some visible 2d point that uh, like some touch point sometimes you only see on an edge uh, of the model and so on so we actually managed to place the model not that precise but again usually we use spring pins back in all our tasks Hopefully it's clear. So let's go further and switch back to the presentation and discuss uh, what's the difference between pin tool and transform geo. So both 3D nodes and both are made for placing the model in 3D space, for locating the object. But there is a difference. So pin tool actually acts exactly like transform geo but on steroids so in transform geo you have a um, this axis knob which you can change and uh, you have some uh, translate rotate and scale knobs over there but actually the same we have in pin tool we have this uh, knobs for translation and rotation and actually we also have a knob as well so it's not that easy to find it there's a small blue dot here and when I click on it uh, it it appears and you can drag this model exact exactly exactly like it was uh, uh, in GeoTracker and it changed the translation knob as well. But if you try to make the same thing with the help of transform geo, it wouldn't be so easy because you have to create a camera. Ah, you, okay, we already have a camera. So usually you have to do something like uh, create scanline render. And actually scanline render has the same number of... Uh, inputs like background object and camera and then 
locate create wireframe and um, apply it to our model and then oops let's switch off everything else you have to okay let me change the layout so where is our transform geo here it is here it is and let's switch so it's viewer one we need viewer two where is our model ah here it is and now I have to drag it I can drag it in scanline render up but yeah scanline render doesn't act like and rotate it somehow to place the model on its place and so it's and it would be kind of a some iterative process which is really uh for me it's weird because it's really hard to and long process and pin tool solves exactly this this thing like how to place the model in th in uh, in projection space so let's delete it and um, do we have some questions at the moment um i am using flattened image for background Oh, yeah, let's discuss uh, the um, inputs. So first input is basically model and probably one of the most tricky one because sometimes it's not that easy to understand where and how to obtain the model. So, uh, first of all, the really simple way to get the model is just uh, photogrammetry or 3D scanner or something like this but then usually you have to retopologize it and so on so it's uh, usually quite a tedious process but again if you have lots of uh, object tracking usually it works it. but also there are some hacks for this first of all for if you have a model of the face you can use face builder also sometimes models are really simple like cubes cards and so on and usually it's enough just to measure uh, its parameters uh, and 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 that's it and then you can recreate this model also uh, sometimes i use a model builder for creating such models because sometimes you can just if you have lots of shots in one location you can track the camera first and then recreate the model with a model builder and use it for um, aligning for layout for tracking uh, all other stuff in the same location uh, also leader scan and uh, what else oh one really awesome hack especially if you work with uh, air drone shots because sometimes uh, you fly uh, over some map uh, over some area which you can find on a google maps and then you can create uh, geometry out of uh, google map uh, with probably some buildings like just uh, create simple uh, cylinders uh, for them or, or cubes and then use it for tracking for aligning for estimation focal lengths and so on and um, the other question is how accurate should be the model and it basically two questions first how many polygons should be in the model and usually i answer that there should be rel relatively reasonable number of polygons so if you have a model with lots of polygons it's great but it will slow down the whole process so if you have not enough polygons they will eat the form and it will be hard to place a model 
So you should find something in the middle. And the other question is how accurate should be the model for uh, like in terms of the form. And usually the answer is that the better model you have, the better result you get. But still you can use the pretty rough models, for example, for tracking of the car. You can track the car with a model of cube and it, it work in GeoTrack and I'll show it the next time in uh, the stream which will be dedicated to GeoTracker. But again, the better model you have, the better result you get. The next question is background. So usually uh, in GeoTracker uh, you have to use uh, on uh, distorted footage. So without lens distortion. Uh, it's pretty easy to get it like if you especially if you have a grid uh, of the lens and so on. And there is a undistortion pipeline in Nuke. So it's just on Nuke side, not on Kintel side. And uh, I have to say that in version 12 it's pretty express uh, um, pretty great. <laughs> well, and the last question. So regarding the uh, footage, it shouldn't be flattened, but it should be uh, uh, undistorted. And uh, the last and probably the most tricky thing is uh, camera. So camera should be... Well, let's discuss camera parameters first. What parameters of the camera are important? So let's open uh, Nuke again and open camera. Uh, and there are two types of parameters, like external and internal parameters. Uh, external parameters are basically the position of the camera and internal parameters is how this camera projects the image. So, uh, and for pin tool, the most important part is internal parameters. So, first of all, focal length. Uh, we all know what focal length is, but there are also two important parameters here. Um, horizontal and vertical aperture. And uh, honestly, the important parameter for them, only one, just horizontal aperture, because most of the cases we use footage which is wider than taller so you can uh, set up here almost everything and it won't affect the projection so it basically means that there are two parameters which are important it's horizontal aperture and focal length uh, but it's not exactly like this let's close this top close pain and um, because let's for example because important is the uh, ratio of these parameters so for example if I make the focal length twice bigger like for example like this uh, it will definitely affect the projection okay what well, it was 50 and oh, we remove pins. Uh, let's set up everything here. So let's change camera project uh, parameters. Like for example, yeah, it's it becomes uh, bigger, closer. But if I, for example, twice this parameter as well, and then the model exactly on the same position. So the real important parameter is equivalent focal lengths. And we all heard about uh, crop factor and so on. So basically the only, there is only one parameter which affects the projection, equivalent focal lengths. And uh, let's switch back to our presentation and let's discuss how it affects the projection 
Uh, probably you've seen this GIF before. Uh, it's the same object, the same uh, guy, but it filmed on a different um, focal lenses. And you see that projection definitely changes. Let's try reproduce this uh, thing on on Fox. And I've created a quite a funny setup for this. I've here's a Fox model. Then I apply some basic material on top of this. Oop, what is it? Uh, here it is. And then I rotate it a bit and and then I have a camera which also a bit shifted and uh, in camera I animated focal lengths and in scene ah, in, and also I've created a ge uh, transform geo here which has animated parameter for scale and scale depends exactly on the camera uh, focal lengths and I and then I also animated uh, camera focal lengths like just the number three and uh, if we look at it in 3d it will look like this uh, camera yeah, so oh, let's put it in the same scene. It looks like this. And if I've switched to render, it looks like this. So you can clearly see that um, focal length affects the projection, but the uh, and if you have uh, wrong parameter for focal length, then you can't place the model on its correct place. So let's try. So let's open pin tool. Um, say that, for example, let's say it was twenty two and three, but. Yeah, again, let's use focal lengths 100, but the correct one is 50. And let's try to place it. So, um, let's place one here, another one. Hmm, something goes wrong, it works. Okay, you see here. camera okay again you see when I try to set up it correctly it doesn't work you see every every time we have some error somewhere uh, let's let's use this render here and uh, create pin tool for uh, for this and try with with th this render so geometry goes to the original fox head and take camera and just create some some random camera so and yeah let's let's try to place a model I put one pin, two pins, three pins, and you see I I can't do it because, the, because of wrong focal lengths. Well, the cool thing that uh, that this process could be inverted and here we have a special thing uh, for this so I can say that probably my 
focal length from camera is wrong and let's use some custom constant focal length and now I can change the focal length oh got something something is really weird let's change the projection okay something I don't know what's happened let's try again so I set up the model tried to locate it and then I said custom focal lengths and yeah let's change it and you see how it affects the projection but it's not that easy to find the correct uh, focal lengths here so there is a small tick here which called estimate focal lengths and now when I drag the model uh, the drag pins on the model it will not only place the model but also find the correct focal lengths for it so let's try set up as precise as we can like this and uh, here it is and it seems that the, it guessed the focal length 15.4 and the original camera was 15 so quite close usually if you have a number of lenses uh, you can always guess what was the number like if you have 81 you can guess how oh, probably it was 80 or something like this well uh, some questions Sean asks so they have to be quads or non triangles 3d scanner outputs to triangles but can be reduced actually we you can use three angles as well and we tried geotrack and fa and pin tool with really crazy models with lots of polygons uh, with crazy topology and uh, it will work but when you have triangles it's uh, and and if the model is not retopologized it's really hard to understand what part of geometry uh, um, where should where should be placed the particular part of the geometry because there are no such uh, points in topology which you can use to align it but sometimes you don't need it well um, and Carmen asks um, probably I'll ask her uh, answer this question a bit later um, at the end of the stream well so um, we just discussed a really important thing which called focal length estimation so in if we don't know camera parameters we can guess them using this feature and uh, estimate them pretty precise um, also if you, you sometimes it's much easier to get information about the camera than uh, about the lens and in my experience usually people know which camera they used or, or it was written in uh, metadata but there's no data about focal length then please file the correct uh, information about the camera in horizontal and vertical aperture and then you can estimate the focal lengths and then guess the what was the actual focal lengths based on this estimation because usually again lenses has some uh, predefined uh, number of uh, fixed focal lengths well um, 
let's go to the next thing next thing moving camera so up to the moment we discussed only uh, placing of the in in the current moment but what if the camera moves so actually in this footage um, this fox if I open it you can see that let's close everything else you can see that there is a movement of the camera and I can track it so I tracked it with camera tracker and let's open it and let's open the camera and here it is so it was a camera which floating around this uh, point cloud and if I look at this point cloud yeah it exactly looks these points looks exactly like a fox head yeah so then let's open our pin tool here and we see that ah uh, well we need to create one more pin tool for this because now we can use this camera with the same geometry same background so let's locate the model in uh, based on this moving camera the very important thing that actually camera when it moves it also defines the scale of the scene it actually defines the scene because it's already moves in some um, space and trajectory so let's uh, click center geo let's drag points to their position And here you are. Everything located. Let's switch to 3D and open our camera and camera tracker. And oop, there is an issue because you can clearly see that the model located correctly in projection view, but it has a different scale. And now is it there is a small thing here called scale and I when I drag it it will drag the model according to the view through strom along the view through strom of the camera so if I look at it in 2d nothing changes so the model is just stands uh, on its place and nothing changed in uh, projection view but you see the movement of the object in 3d so and you can try to find the uh, scale value which will correspond uh, to the point cloud so le let's take a look how the wrong scale works on moving camera uh, let's close camera param camera tracker parameters so when I scroll the playhead the model because of the wrong scale slips away and now we can do a really cool thing we can change the scale parameter and this scale parameter will work for uh, the only keyframe which we have on this frame and uh, when I drag scale I can find a correct value of scale based on other view so let's take the completely different view and try to find the correct scale value like 3084 and if I switch again in 3d and open 
point cloud I see that yeah now my model correctly placed in 3d space for this moving camera let's switch back and let's verify that everything is everything looks good on all angles of view um okay cool it's one more uh not really clear feature of pin tool and uh, a bit hidden one that you can change the scale of the uh, scene or scale of the object after the uh, initial placement and it will uh, scale the object without losing the uh, the whole job and it will scale and move the object if you scale it up then it moves it uh, from the camera and vice versa if you make it smaller it will be closer to the camera um, let's play with this scene a bit more um, let's say for for instance that I don't have a point cloud and I want to place some additional uh, model into this scene so let's for example switch to some frame for instance this one and let's add a cube we can add a artificial object into scene also with the help of pin tool so you even don't need the actual object on a projection you can just create some of for example usually you have add some buildings or something like this in the scene and you have to place them somehow so you have a moving camera but how to place the object so let's take a cube let's connect background and camera and uh, let's play, play click center gi when I have only two pins, it just rotates the object around the other one. Uh, when I have three pins, it rotates it in 3D. Um, so yeah, yeah. Let's remove it them for now, and let's, for example, put the cube here on a table. Um, let's say it's somewhere here it looks pretty okay and again because of the wrong scale of the object when I drag it uh, drag the playhead the scale parameter should be changed to match uh, to, to match the camera movement so and there on original frame there was a small uh, button here near the uh, vertex of the cube so let's verify that it's still here something like this and now actually I've added a cube here here it is so we just added a, a object to the scene without any uh, jumping in 3d space or something like this um let's also do some probably vfx now <laughs> for this uh, for example what we can do let's create a simple relighting so i can um, first of all i create a scene here and uh, i will use this uh, object from pin tool 
I've add some basic material, apply material. I do um, I'm doing basic material, some light. Um, it will be a directional light, and let's use scanline render. So camera is the same, object goes from the scene and and no background here. We will then merge it to the background. And also I add some grade note here. Okay, let's add it a bit later. Here it is. And uh, but merge should be with um, screen obviously yeah and let's create a grade node obviously we'll need it uh, with some let's say um, gamma correction um, and uh, probably even some offset And here it is. So we change the object a, a little, um, just with the help of pin tool and scanline render. And so, and then you can, for example, make this object manipulate with some um, um, what else? How, to, how it's called? Mm, um, particles. Or you can change the text and so on. So pin tool is just, is pretty useful, even without any tracking. But we will later discuss how to use it for kind of simple tracking. Um, let's switch to the questions. The question from after: Can you match it to the white cube next to the mask? Uh, probably you mean. Um, this cube okay let's do it why why not um i switch to this pin tool and uh, there was a keyframe which i'm gonna delete and uh, oh let's not delete it just remove pins and drag them to this white cube here Let's do it more precisely. Something like this, and then uh, we need we need to match uh, scales again. So let's switch here and drag the scale. It should be smaller, yeah. Oh, not that small. Yeah. Switch to one case or oh, not? Yeah, something like this. There are some issues with playback, but don't judge me strict because I have a just ordinary laptop here. Um, probably it could be done more accurately, but yeah, something like this. Uh, I hope I answered the question. Steven asks. I notice sometimes when I hit play, the geo stays static, doesn't update, until I stop to go frame by frame. This is an issue that will be look at uh, or a new interaction limitation. No, usually it's the issue because, for example, if you drag the viewer here, oh, let's, for example, here, you still uh, can see the object 
but when I click it it's uh, um, looks like uh, unmovable but again when I click um, frame by frame everything changed the issue is that the viewer where is the viewer oh what a mess we have now here never do like me uh, if I switch viewer here then everything is okay thank thank you Stephen for the question uh, it, well let's continue then no questions up to the moment animation beautiful part so for this I will use the other project with uh, violin so the basically this footage was just downloaded from and I bought it on some probably Shutterstock or something like this then I found a model of the violin which looks exactly like the one on a uh, footage it's not precise um, and it's not a 3d scan but it's pretty okay uh, speaking about the accuracy so uh, here it is and uh, and I actually I don't know camera parameters probably they are already estimated yeah they are already estimated here but again uh, I, d I didn't know them so let's create a pin tool node oh by the way you can select them all and create pin tool and cause all nodes have different types it creates it correctly so let's switch to 2d switch to full frame center geo and let's place a first keyframe so i put it here i put it here probably not yeah let's here uh, sometimes you have to do hoop and you can see that it's almost okay something like this and then you can track to other frame like let's go for example this direction and then you can fix that it slips you see there are s lots of these ropes and actually you do all, all almost everything from scratch on every new keyframe and uh, and now when I look at everything between keyframes you can see that um, the model is interpolated between them but of course there could be some issues in terms of it's not a tracking it's like interpolation or something uh, for example here it's interpolated because of the movement so if you want to track the object like kind of rotomation or something like this you have to split the whole sequence with the keyframes uh, based on some semantic important uh, um, points object changes its uh, but, um, it, the direction of the movement and so on so uh, and at this point we need to discuss in frames it's pretty easy just there is a um, navigation bar here and you can delete and uh, um, create keyframes uh, and uh, it actually automatically appears and you can navigate between them then 
Uh, very important thing is consistency of the keyframes. So if you want that is um, um, located exactly the same way on a different keyframes on a, on a projection, you need to verify it somehow. For example, let's take this keyframe here, or probably even here, and here's a small scratch. Let's create a pin here, right on it. Then let's verify that this pin is the next uh, frame, and it isn't. So I drag it here, and I try, and here you can see the model is not that precise. And then on the next frame, I will try to put this model on the same scratch as well. Uh, also, there is a lots of us when you set up pins on some semantic parts and so on. For example, let's add one more on, uh, let's say, here. It's not that visible. Okay, probably. Okay, let's here and uh, what else? And this black uh, spot here. And then when I try to set up them uh, all uh, on new uh, keyframe, it will be a kind of a huge pain because you will need to drag and other pins drags you in different directions. So there is a pin and pin button over there. And uh, you can click on it and it will make all the pins yellow. So they are kind of inactive. And then you can drag them and activate them one by one. I clicked on this one and they became red. Um, and red it means active. So I, now I have only one pin. Now let's activate one more here and one more here probably one more and now I can activate them all clicking again on this button now they all red and I can drag them and fix and uh, verify that they are all on their place Something strange to be with this pin, but I think you get the idea. It's really a helpful button when you have lots of pins, especially if you have tracking markers or something like this. Um, okay, and uh, varying focal lengths. Yeah, so sometimes you can. Um, you have a footage with changing focal lengths as well. So you can set up varying focal lengths and estimate focal lengths in every shot and the focal length, uh, every frame and uh, focal lengths will be also interpolated be between the keyframes. So you can even play with a camera with changing focal uh, zoom. Okay. Um, one more thing regarding animation is a magic keyframe. Probably you heard about this function, but let's. I want to show it because it's really impressive. Um, so I'm gonna delete other keyframes because they could be inconsistent. And uh, actually, magic keyframe was created specifically for making keyframes more consistent. So when I click on magic keyframe, it analyzes the underlying footage, analyzes it edges and try to put the model on top of these edges in a way uh, that um, edges of the model goes go along the edges on the footage. So let's try to click this major keyframe button. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, on a first keyframe, oh, it works. 
so it changed a bit we can we can fix it but it's pretty rough estimation and now when I go to some other uh, keyframe I can click magic keyframe again and it will create a keyframe it's not that fast but if it works it's much faster than you can do it manually here it is so sometimes you should fix it a little for him but then you can for example try to fix it in the menu oh frame server oh I love your frame server um, click center oh not center geo but magic keyframe hopefully it will work I crossed the fingers Boom. here it is so basically you even can set up keyframes uh, every frame with the help of magic keyframe and it will be kind of a really slow and uh, not really uh, easy to use but tracking and I used it here on first 27 frames uh, let's play it so I just set up keyframe every frame with the help of magic keyframe. Um, there is a question from Steven O'Connor. Uh, magic keyframe looks amazing. Thank you, Steve. Uh, is this something that you are planning to port into face tracker as well? It is. <laughs> We want to port magic keyframe to um, face tracker uh, based on facial landmarks and we have some uh, experiments uh, on this way and they are pretty promising. It's, it's not that hard but uh, yeah it will simplify the uh, setting up keyframes. Yes. Also there is a question from Arca Ray. Um, how you can add parameters in camera if you have no information about parameters like focal distance, shutter, value, etc. So again, uh, as I said before, the only important parameter is focal uh, equivalent focal length. And we can estimate with the help of focal length estimation. So hopefully that's the answer. Um, Okay, we discussed magic keyframe as well. Oh, let's let's try it on something. Let's try it, for example, on a fox. Sometimes you have to uh, first roughly place the model, uh, for example, like here. And when I click magic keyframe, it will find it edges or not. No, that, that's, a, that's an example how it fails. By the way, there are some other keyframes, probably they are wrong. Ah, because this keyframe was wrong. And uh, yeah, let's try it again. Because magic keyframe also analyze other, uh, frame, uh, other keyframes as well. Oh, here it is. Yeah, sometimes you have to fix it a little. But more or less, it's it's just amazing. Oops, here you are. Uh, let's switch back to our presentation. Let's discuss results, and it's it's important thing. So first of all, uh, link output. Yeah, of course we can. First of all, what we can export. There are four options here. Uh, transform Geo, and we know that uh, the whole pin tool, let's de delete um, all this stuff. And uh, yeah, 
let's delete everything. Too many nodes. Um, and let's create a pin tool here. And uh, again, let's geometry, camera background. So we know that pin tool basically acts like a transform geo. So uh, you can uh, easily use its output as a result. As a result, but sometimes, for example, to copy the result to some other object, transform geo, and you can export it and apply to the to the object. So let's make pin tool uh, with some result. Let's adjust parameters. Oh, by the way, it's a good time for major keyframe because I don't want to wait. Uh, and uh, is it my other? hopefully it will work even on a first keyframe. Um, and here it is. Cool. Oh no. Nope. Um, so and now uh, let's let's compare in 3D. Here's a pin tool, and here's a object with transform geo. They are the same, surprisingly. <laughs> well. Also, sometimes you need to export axes. For example, for applying it to some camera or something. If you track some object and you want to make the camera uh, you, uh, following this uh, object and so on, you have to use axes. Just with the same uh, data like it was in Transform Geo. Um, but there are several more options. Uh, first of all, camera. What is camera? So, as I said before, you can estimate camera. Uh, you you can estimate focal lengths um, in camera. So let's create this uh, one more pin tool. Create background geometry camera, and this camera was a wrong focal length, and. Um, I create center geo, say that this pin tool I will use custom constant focal length and estimate focal length. And uh, now let's drag it. Um, so we see that I've. Uh, oh, what, what, what's happened? I drag it. Probably it's not the best keyframe for camera estimation. So the best keyframe should have a um, notable parallax for estimating focal length parameters, something like this. So the parameters are like 49 now, and the original camera has it works. So and now. Uh, when I export transform geo, if I click it, it it says to me that hey guy, you change the camera parameters, and this object will looked incorrectly using the original camera. Would you like to export the camera as well? And you say yes, and now you have a camera with right focal lengths, 49, instead of the uh, wrong original. 100 but uh, you can actually export this camera as well just using the camera export and here it is 
it's exactly the same camera well and the last option is tracked camera here and tracked camera is probably the last but very important and more probably most impressive thing which i want to discuss it's like camera alignment so let's take this uh, camera again like this pin tool but this time uh, so we have a background camera but we will try to uh, place um, th tr because if I open this camera it's camera and camera tracker uh, in point cloud in some random place in space but we want to align it somehow and the best thing to align it is make it uh, based on some geometry and um, in that particular case I have such a geometry because uh, just uh, most uh, the cheapest uh, table from IKEA I found uh, its model in uh, the internet here it is and it will be our geometry we go to pin tool and let's try to the it would be a bit trickier uh, trickier than with with uh, face of the head because because um, We don't see the edge of all four uh, angles of this uh, table. Okay, we see one angle here and probably one here, and that's it. So yeah, let's let's try from this view. So I'm gonna open pin tool, enter geo and let's try to place oh sorry i'm working on a touch part uh, place the model here Oop, we definitely need one more pin Uh, pr the model is not exactly precise, but uh, I've at least measured uh, the width and uh, height uh, of the table, and uh, they were okay. Okay, at least they are exactly the same like uh, on the specification on IKEA website. So I tried to put it here. Then I need to adjust scale. So I'm going to the first frame and change scale. Two pins here. Oop. I did something wrong. I think it was pretty okay. Something like this. Mm -hmm. Pretty accurate, I'd say. For example, look at this diagonal. It goes near these buttons. And it's still near the buttons. And here too so something like this so now we if we switch to 3d we can see what's going on it's still a camera which we actually place the uh, this table in this weird point in 3d space but in pin tool we can export tracked camera 
and it will be such a camera which actually floating around the original object located in 0, 0, 0. This time we changed scale and that's why we need either changed uh, camera scale or the original model scale. So we can do it in two different ways. Original model scale we can change just adding transform geo and write exactly the same scale parameter here. Now I have a smaller object and uh, let's create a scene for this. So now I have a, this, this tracked camera and transform geo uh, which makes the object uh, to the scale of the original tracked camera and here it is. This camera. Or if you think that the original, if you need this camera in scale of the uh, original table, then you need to create just axis knob with scale, which inversion of uh, the original scale and set up here. So now I have table and this camera which is floating around the table isn't it cool so basically we had a tracked camera it was tracked somewhere and now we can align one or two or several cameras based on one scene geometry and all cameras will be on the same place cool let's switch to the questions probably you have a lot at the moment um, Jordi asks, can you extract UV from the object? Uh, you can extract UV from the object using uh, the, if you have, if you already have UV, you can, uh, using camera, unwrap it uh, using scanline render in UV mode. But if you don't have UV, you can use projection to create UV based on the projection using UV project node. Uh, also, there is a question from uh, Steven. Any plans for a create a polygon feature to bypass having pre-built geo? We are thinking about it, uh, but currently we not yet ready um, um, to come up with some working solution. Okay, so uh, let's continue with camera export. Um, export tracked camera. So uh, export tracked camera works either for static or moving cameras. So static camera will just, will just place the model um, in a correct space according to the object located in the origin uh, and uh, moving camera will also change uh, uh, not only the camera in the keyframe but the whole sequence. Um, one more example, co-align several cameras together. So let's say you have a multi-view pipeline and you have several cameras uh, like this. So here it's me and I have two cameras. Uh, we will use this footage at some uh, point when we will talk about uh, tracking deformable objects. What's going on here? Camera 2 where you are. So we have two cameras which are synchronized and um, I want to locate them and uh, in a scene. I've measured, you, you can see this uh, pattern on the floor and I've actually take a ruler and 
measured all uh, parameters of this pattern. Actually, there are just two parameters, like this and this. And I create a simple flow geometry for this. And now I can create two pin tools. One is here. And uh, let's switch to 2D. I'm hanging. Hey, Nuke. Hey, Nuke. Oh, OK, it works. Um, center Geo. The Geo is a card. and. I can't see it, so I place, I rotate it a little to see. And um, yeah, here it is. So now let's uh, place this object. And um, for example, oh, whoa. This one goes here, this one here, this one here. Um, I don't know correct focal length parameters for these cameras, so I can also estimate them. So I say custom constant focal length and estimate it, please. And we'll, it will estimate it as well. So, and looking at the floor. I'm placing this model so let's calculate uh, ah, it seems I did something wrong yeah, something like this it should be. At some point it's just simply just remove all pins uh, and track them again. Oop. Yeah, now they seem to be almost their correct places. And uh, something like this. And it was only one camera. So now I can pin tool, export, transform camera, export. Now I have one camera which located based on the geometry. Also, I can create one more camera. So, uh, background geometry camera, and one more pin I can hang in on. Um, can kin tools be used to track human body movements? Oh yes, we are actively working on it. And uh, actually this footage was filmed specifically for um, testing our new node which will work on tracking um, full bodies. So again in pin tool I click center geo oh, rotate it a little and now we need to place the model of the floor exactly on the same place. Again I don't know camera parameters so I say custom focal length and estimated please for me and let's drag our pins so this one should be here this one here I 
I want to remind that the footage should be uh, undistorted. Otherwise, you can't do such tr trick because these lines should be straight. And yep, we are done. Now we can export tracked camera, export, and here it is. We have two cameras. Um, let's open them. Two cameras, Synge uh, floor, and they are all look at the same scene. And now if, for example, I create a cube here, um, and let's create a scan line render for camera object and background and one for other view scanline render camera object object cube and background and uh, hmm, it seems we need to move this cube a little for instance here uh, let's make it wireframe here it is um, see through we have a cube uh, background and now we can locate this cube looking at different cameras Oop. one two Here it is. Something like this. I won't do it exactly precise. I'd like to, but I think that you are already tired of all these manipulations and we need to... Yeah, I placed it. Okay, yeah, so yeah, now we place the cube and actually the same way we can track the human body as well, looking from the different angles of view and the initial setup is very easy. So, let's uh, continue. Um, yeah, we discussed multiple cameras and now let's discuss a bit about tips and tricks. So camera inversion, I, I, I'll skip it for now um, because, of, well, it's not that easy. Uh, but the thing is that pin tool can invert the camera or invert the matrix of the object and uh, it can place the uh, model based on camera or camera based on model but also you can copy manually camera parameters to um, pin tool and then um, invert them via exporting camera uh, parameters it gives you uh, ability to track the camera around the object via uh, camera tracker and then invert um, it's uh, cameras parameters and make a transform geo which uh, basically uh, has the same tracking data but it tra but it's transform geo it's not camera floating around fixed degrees of freedom oh it's it's a, by the way really a cool thing so let's take this example with a um, um, f with this table and this pin tool now we have a camera which actually um, in a correct place um, and it's aligned based of this um, based on this table and now let's create one more pin tool for this and uh, to place a cube again or let's say cylinder and let's place cylinder and um, we now use this camera again this is exactly the same background and uh, click center geo 
and um, oh, before I gonna drag it, I want to uh, fix in pin tool rotations around what axis uh, actually actually any rotations yeah it seems that n no return because the uh, cylinder should be located ah, center geo already changed it uh, so yeah let's uh, by the way if I if I click center geo with them switched off center geo oh no it will it's, it's kind of a room for improvement so yeah now I want to um, drag and place this cylinder uh, but I already fixed all rotations It. For example, let's put it here um, somewhere. Okay. For example, here. And uh, again, let's fix uh, the scale. Oh, seems it should be something like this. And I placed it. And when I drag now pins, it can't. It always on on um, um, has right r rotations because I fixed them. And if I switch to 3D now and open this pin tool and the original table, you may notice that the object is exactly on its place so if you have some uh, for example object which moves um, on the plane like moving car or some uh, object which uh, is uh, which doesn't look along the Z um, axis or you can lock some um, um, degrees of freedom um, on um, some rotations and so on please do it it will uh, make your uh, pin tool more precise and uh, so let's switch back to our presentation and break rotations whoa how to show it let's open um, violent project so we have three keyframes here and let's open curve editor and uh, here's a curve of rotation but what if for example in one keyframe there will be a huge rotation uh, for instance along the x coordinate Board. it's probably the wrong pin tool yeah like here um, yeah here we have a huge rotation along the one of the angles for example uh, the most interesting one probably this one and uh, sometimes when you have a huge rotation uh, it will jump over 300 uh, 360 degrees and you will uh, have wrong interpolation because of it so you can fix it easily by clicking unbreak rotation button here and uh, yeah I still not something like this and you can click on break rotation uh, it's wrong pin tool sorry 
we need pin tool 2 curve editor rotation uh, it's pin tool 1 sorry guys yeah something like this and click unbreak rotation button and it will actually put the see, let's look at it again it will put the keyframes and all in interpolation uh, without changing the uh, rotations but uh, so it's like modular 360 so it's just remove uh, all um, rotations across 360 and make your curve smooth because sometimes you know when you track something you have a curve of rotation like tra -ta 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 -ta, poof, and then sudden jump on 360 uh, frames and then again uh, it's it rising and you can fix it by clicking this button okay then um, we already discussed Warren focal lengths and all these scale issues. Uh, scale issues it was about when you um, have camera and object in different scale and then you need to export either transform geo to scale the object to the camera or axis, make an axis to scale the camera to the object. And the last thing is motion blur. Um, it's very useful especially for tracking of fast moving objects um, let's say this object is not that fast moving let's say it's fast moving uh, and we can click motion below and uh, oh too fast Let's find a, just a frame with motion, motion blur. Not like this. And uh, to match yeah, it's motion blur, yeah, for example, like in this frame, you can click this motion blur button here and Let's create one more keyframe somewhere nearby. Oh, magic keyframe will help us. So to match the motion blur, we have a special feature for this and uh, it draws motion blur on the edge of the object and uh, if you need to set up precise keyframe you can switch it on and it will add this motion blur on the edge pretty useful especially for fast moving objects so and that's it it's time for your questions guys um, how to install uh, Kin tools uh, for Nuke 12. Just go to our website, which is uh, kin, kin tools dot accept cookies, of course, and then go to download Nuke package and uh, select the version of your nuke you sell 12 12.0 or 12.1 and download it and there will be installer and just click on installer and it will be installed and then in nuke you will see our menu with all our nodes and um, well 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 i have an idea 
for wireframe wouldn't be would it wouldn't it be easier to have an additional wireframe view from top or custom view to make more precise adjustments well actually using nuke uh, you can create one more viewer with a top view and it's like you can always create a one separate viewer uh, to put on top of this and uh, say that it's top view and yeah, here it is here's our object and uh, when again when I drag something here you can see what's going on on in top view again um, uh, after asks so the main difference with this and geo tracker is uh, the tracking ability correct and actually next time on geo tracker stream it most likely will be in uh, two weeks um, we will discuss the difference and actually understand how to track with the help of geo tracker so yeah geo tracker is a pin tool which can track steven asks i don't have any more questions just wanted to thank you guys very much for doing this stay healthy <laughs> thank you steven um Kamen asks how uh hi are you planning a maya kin tool plugin as you did for blender thanks in advance we are working on maya plugin yes of, uh, face uh, builder for maya uh, i can't give any estimates when it will be ready maya api is uh, kind of a, it's not the most beautiful api in the world Benjamin asks, do you plan to port all of your tools on Blender? Yeah, I already mentioned it. We want to port all of them. Um, face Builder, Face Tracker, probably at some point even Geo Tracker. But I, I, I'm I, not sure whether it's a um, big demand now for Geo Tracker. Um, um, okay. Okay, no questions for the moment. Um, so let's switch back to the presentation. And uh, several words about next streams. So next stream will be dedicated to GeoTracker. And uh, I'm not yet sure how long it will be. This one was pretty long, like almost two hours. Oh, guys sorry and um, but again um, it will be it will consist of three parts basics some tips and tricks and uh, tracking of deformable objects deformable objects will be definitely a separate stream but probably basics and tip and tricks will be all in one or probably we split it into two streams uh, depending on how many different examples we'll find. By the way, if you have a good examples of footage and so on, which you want uh, me to cover on the next stream, please send them uh, to me and um, I'll try to explain everything on your footage, guys. And uh, then we'll be face builder nuke. So, uh, we have Discord uh, server where we are available all the days and you can ask questions ask in uh, uh, chat mode chat mode and also we have a newsletter and uh, we will send a recording and all the um, um, projects which uh, were used in this uh, um, webinar today so uh, you can practice everything yourself so please subscribe to discord and to uh, newsletter and uh, the last but not least thing please we want to make this uh, series better and better so we need your feedback uh, please file it uh, we have a uh, this uh, um, link uh, first of all this link will be available in the chat and then in comments and uh, also you can just type it and uh, there is a small survey like five or six questions 
most likely five like uh, was everything is okay in terms of sound in terms of uh, picture in terms of uh, understanding everything and so on so please file it and um, it highly appreciable uh, from our side and let's then again uh, discuss questions so Gabriel asks um, great is the stream going to be available later on it will be available and uh, again subscribe to newsletter if you want uh, us to notify about future streams or um, uh, about uh, the recordings after arcs uh, any plan for a subscription or annual service for licenses i always forget when my license expire well uh, we understand the issue and we want to uh, made our uh, subscription more automatic because now you have to buy a new annual license every year and uh, we are working on this but it needs lots of uh, stuff in terms of marketplace or some um, uh, account and so on so we are working on this it's in the plan but uh, it's not even in uh, the development at the moment um, Thank you for streaming. Very helpful. Can't wait for the next one. Thank you. Jordi, streaming. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Cheers from Mexico. Well, thank you guys. So many kind words from you. Thank you a lot. So, uh, if we don't have a. Sorry I missed probably this part. Does it have a forward and backward auto track or any per uh, frame magic key? Um, Adrian, uh, magic keyframe is actually keyframe. It's not auto tracking. So yeah, no, for, for magic keyframe you have to set up it uh, and push the button on every keyframe. Otherwise it's it would be kind of a tracking Probably at some point we will add magic keyframe functionality to GeoTrack as well, but at the moment it's too slow to enable it uh, by default. Well, uh, we have a small uh, latent, uh, latency, of course, like 30 seconds, but it seems there are no more questions up to the moment. So, guys, uh, Thank you all, thank you for coming, and uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you a lot, and uh, please stay healthy. Bye.